guys, it's Red Dragon MA, and today I want to talk to you, I mean, I know, I know, it's been a while, but I have my reasons, because I totally hate, <laughs> not all, like I've said it about a bajillion, pot, a bajillion times, I know all my personal time, my personal time is very limited these days, so I'm finally getting an opportunity to talk about 2017 Power Rangers. I talked about the first two movies, and I've got, uh, got like a description, talking about the first, talking about the first two movies, the first one being obviously my favorite because it's all just can't be fun the second one i believe it to be a uh just a victim of bad timing and possibly for franchise burnout uh all kinds of other stuff we made it made nine million dollars i mean eight million dollars on a nine million dollar on a nine million dollar budget and it was unfortunate what it did but still people still used to enjoy power of trouble for what it is it's 2017 movie, however, I, I don't know. I know there's a lot of I know there's a lot of uh, mixing of opinions when it comes to the 2017 Power Rangers movie, and excuse me, that being some of the earliest videos on this channel, uh, I was fully at the time I was fully intending to talk about the 2017 movie when it came out, and I finally got an opportunity just to watch it, to talk about it, to share what I was going to learn my thoughts on it. Uh, at the time, I just could not upload videos at all. I mean, this is. Uh, I mean, I mean, I was so bummed the day that that came out, the day that I could, that the day that it came out, and I was unable to make a video at the time. Just you know, that was just circumstances always change for everybody. But I'm ha I'm happy. I, mean, I really enjoyed the uh, 2017 movie. Like the the TLDR the artist says, I really enjoyed the movie. Obviously, like. It's just it obviously for one. First of all, it's Power Rangers because it's gonna like be right up my alley. It's, it's, it really will. <laughs> so you're gonna have, I'm gonna have a good time watching Power Rangers. Uh, and of course, as I've said, back even back on those videos, as, as I've said that it was going to be by Mighty Morphin. Uh, the fact that uh, people aren't gonna know other seasons of Power Rangers, like uh, say Turbo, Lost Galaxy, SPD. Uh, Dino Thunder and all the other ones and I was gonna go ahead and, and more people are gonna know Mighty Morphin as I've mentioned in the past the conversations I've had with other people they've at least watched the first three seasons to the first six seasons and probably fell off after that and really stopped watching it all together and that, uh, there's just been so much that has happened for Power Rangers over these few years uh, but yes uh, but yes, today I wanted to talk about the Power Rangers movie for 2017 and all the good stuff that happened with it and all the, the little things that I that I was thinking at the time and it's probably going to be re me reiterating a few things that I've said in those previous videos but I think this is actually something that I really wanted to talk about because it is really, it's really something I really wanted to talk about for the longest, longest time. It's just like the Sonic video I did. It, it came out five years that I made a video about five years after the movie came out. Uh, not the movie, but the video came out. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely wanted to talk about this movie for so, so long. And now that I have the time, now that I have time to do it, let's get into it. Released March 24th, 2017, Power Rangers, the 2017 Power Rangers, had landed Lions Gate, 142 million dollars on a 100 million dollar budget, which is not very good when you factor in all the other stuff that goes into it. Notoriously, 2017 Power Rangers had the biggest sponsor of all time and Krispy Kreme. <laughs> plays a part in it definitely and for those of you who've never watched the movie it plays a part in it trust me you're gonna want to you, you, it's it nuts <laughs> uh, a lot of people say that the movie is really good no, a lot of people say that the movie has a lot of the breakfast club mixed in with a lot of the tropes that Power Rangers does like I can remember one of the probably one of the ones I one of the ones I noticed is that the fact that the characters Billy Cranston, the original Blue Ranger, and Zack Taylor, the Black Ranger, they were both played, that Billy's played by a black kid, uh, played by R.J. Kyler. I honestly, I honestly, I always think it was pronounced Siler, not Kyler, and Ludie Lin, who would go on to play Liu Kang on, on the 2021 Mortal Kombat, and he played Zack, uh, who, and he's Asian, 
and so there was a lot of that was like a big point of contention at the time. I'm uh, blue. Uh oh, it's not my favorite color, but it's cool. Uh oh, uh, I'm black. What? I am. There was also the fact that there was Elizabeth Banks that played Rita Repulsa. Uh, she played, uh, for me, it's like a combination of the. Uh, it was a combination of like this, the first season and the third season where she was this intimidating figure, but then also at the same time, and, but then also at the same time, she was like the jokey, joke, jokey, jokey Rita Repulsa and Dakri Montgomery from Stranger Things. And I think there's another movie he's on called Better Watch Out where he ended up doing that movie and he got the part for it. At the same time, he got the part for Power Rangers, which is really cool. Uh, there's Becky G, who plays Trin the Yellow Ranger, and I'll talk about that later on. And then there's also Naomi Scott, who went on to play the Prince of Jasmine in the live action, uh, <laughs> in the live action Aladdin movie for Disney. Uh, she plays Kimberly. Uh, and then there's, there's, of course, the one and only Brian Cranston playing Zordon. And, of course, uh, he, and, of course, it's for those of you who do not know, Billy Cranston, the original Blue Ranger, is named after Brian Cranston because Brian Cranston actually worked on Power Rangers because he played Snizzard and the Twin Man. <laughs> he was the voice. He wasn't the actors for like the people in the suit. He played the voices. He did the voices. Bill Hader is Alpha Five, and the dad from Brightburn is Jason's dad. And then there's the end, and like I was saying, it has a lot of the Breakfast Club vibes because there's a lot of the tension. <laughs> <laughs> this is surprising. So there is that. There definitely is. Uh, let's see. The neat and also uh, going back to Billy. Uh, R.J. Kyler plays Billy because this version of Billy had is a high functioning autistic guy, and a lot of people absolutely liked him. And of course, that Green Montgomery and. Uh, they're just having really cool, ver like, I don't know, it's just really interesting, like, juxtapositions of that, like, they kind of go that they face, as the director, the usual light says, they wanted to make them have face real problems, and, uh, they wanted to do all kinds of stuff with them, and they wanted to do all kinds of stuff with them that Power Rangers never did, although, to be fair, Power Rangers also dealt with various issues, such as survivor's guilt, green candle or, or with the the missing green when Jason felt guilty about the green candle uh there's another one about and um, about con about losing confidence in himself like with Adam on, on season two of Pirates the mirror of regret there's also uh there's quite a few episodes of Pirates that do that do do a serious issues but I totally see where he's come where the director is coming from they wanted to do it in an exposed and not gave away I could also see this is because at the time in 2015, that was a lot, that was probably a big, it wasn't, I'm not, of course the, the movie came out in 2017, but I remember in 2015 there was another short film that showed a version of Power Rangers of what, of what could be done, by an interesting way that it could be done, and it was the Power Slash Rangers film with James Vanderbeek. Hip Hop Kido, that's Kido, and Ab, Ab, him out, knee him up, work it, count it, and punch, punch Hip Hop Kido, let's go. That. Yeah, it's a dark, gritty version. Like, they're going down. Ah, uh, that was the talk of the internet for quite some time, and it was out. And honestly, it was an outstanding little short film. And uh, there's some interesting that what could have been done. That is some interesting that could have been done. That take it just a little bit further. But I'd imagine that was part of the inspiration for Power Rangers. And now I'm gonna talk about them suits. Those suits along with Alpha 5's design, of course, kind of has this alien kind of symbiote type deal. And, fa and famously for his Power Rangers fans, the visor opens up. It's in a similar way to, uh, in a similar way to how on Power Rangers Ninja Storm, you, they had the helmets that opened up. And they, you could see their face. They never, like, they wouldn't take the helmets off. They keep the helmets on, but the face part comes off, comes out. Up and you could see them, and I always thought, and I thought that was a pretty neat thing, uh, because of course that's a fact, of course that is a trope of Power Rangers. You will see a scene with the actors wearing the suits, and uh, you will see the actors wearing the suits and not wearing the helmets just th th to match. So yeah, that's actually something really, co that's actually a really cool scene, because I always thought that those were cool scenes. I always look forward to those scenes in Power Rangers. 
uh, ever since the first, ever since Mighty Morphin Power Rangers did do, start doing those scenes. Because I remember even the first season, they would do scenes but they didn't have the helmet, they'd still be wearing the helmets. Another interesting thing about the Twin Cities and Power Rangers movie is the fact that I remember in the trailer they were going to do a kind of a thing with Jason and Kimberly getting together. Uh, I imagine, because even though this is just more of an origin story for Power Rangers, I saw the, I saw in the trailer. They, I think it was, I believe it was cut from the movie. And I kind of want to be the girl who kisses you right now. Cheesy, right? I know. I, <laughs> I think you should be that girl, but that could. Oh my God. Potentially. Okay, shut be up. A, uh, and it plays into my thoughts about the, the sequel. Of my guesses about the sequel, I have talked about it in the past. But I would kind of try to, I want to do my best to try to elaborate more on it because I would imagine it plays into a certain thing. And also it was the same for Becky G. A lot of people get mad about, a lot of people were not happy about uh, Izzy on Power Rangers Dino Fury uh, getting together with her girlfriend. But they pretty much putting it out there that on the 2017 Power Rangers movie, that, that Trini is probably a, of a, is a, is a LGBT character but this is not in the main line of Power Rangers this is not in the main line of Power Rangers which I think it plays into the fact that it there's a lot of I imagine with power, like there's been a lot of talk about Power Rangers about have it having an identity crisis having all the flavors of something that could be just as good as its contemporaries were like Marvel DC Star Wars, all the other competitors, all the other superhero competitors and stuff like that, and, and but a lot of people still look at Power Rangers the same, not in the same way they would look at something like with Marvel or DC or Star Wars, and and uh, they say, oh, that's not, uh, they, that's a, uh, you know, that's a kid show, it's like and it's the same thing without about like, you know, like, but there have been. <sighs> This is, a, this is a very difficult thing for me to talk about. And not difficult, but it's, it is a big old tangled mess because, like, there's so much that you can say about Power Rangers that it gets help. That people say it gets held back because it's been marketed to kids. And I think that's what the Netflix the Netflix series does what exactly, they exactly wants to try to do in the future. Because I think, uh, because, I, because I've, as we've talked, as it's been mentioned, that they're going to do a different series for, for Netflix while still retaining the uh, the other show for kids and I know they're going to also be doing the animated series which I think is going to be pretty cool too uh, I would love to see it and I would love to see Power Rangers be able to get the love that it get, that be able to get the love that it, that it totally deserves in the same in the same vein of say like a Marvel or DC or Star Wars even though it's probably not going to be even though all those properties absolutely dominate, 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 dominate from these massive companies like Warner Brothers and Mar Mar Warner Brothers and Disney. Uh, I would love to see Power Rangers get to that level, but I'm not entirely sure that that might not happen. I would, again, I would absolutely I love to see Power Rangers at the, at, the, at the same level as it was when they did the shows at Universal Studios. I think at that point, it was super peak Power Rangers that it was like everywhere. And I also, then that goes back to my feelings about how uh, Turbo Power Rangers movie I was imagine is a bit of a bad timing because it was like franchise burnout. But at the same time, I, I would imagine uh, it's not it's the same way for Marvel DC, Marvel DC and Star Wars. Some of the criticism of the movie it didn't it didn't exact. Some people say it didn't have a lot of direction. It didn't exactly have. It was of course the product placement with Krispy Kreme. Although to be fair, that's a very Power Rangers thing to do. Uh, <laughs> it's just a lot of. It's a. That's, I, I think even though I totally get where they're coming from, I totally think that makes it a little more cool. It makes it fun in the very in the most Power Rangers way possible, in my opinion. But there's also like a, there's a lack of action because it is true. Just like Turbo Power Rangers, you do not get Ranger power until the third act of the movie. You, uh, cause like Billy is the first one to get Ranger power. Is like the first one to be able to morph, and a lot of the a lot of the source material. Okay, so I'd say that Jason, of course, that Jason, of course, is uh, is of course supposed to be this really uh, this really cool karate guy he really like uh he's very much a natural born leader uh just a chill dude really cool really cool with everybody 
but absolutely is a big, big, big martial arts nerd. And they don't necessarily make him do that, that he's a quarterback for the Angel Grove football team. There's also Zordon, well, in like the beginning of the movie, that he's also the, uh, he is also, uh, he was also the Red Ranger. Rita as the Green Ranger and having stolen, having taken the Dragon Throat Queen, likely because, likely learning about the Zeo Crystal and then pledging her allegiance to Lord Zed. That's my speculation, uh, cause that was, was, that's what it's totally about. Rita wants to create a, wants to create a monster, that being Goldar, and I'll totally get to that in a minute. Uh, yeah, she wants to create Goldar, and that way, she's gonna, that way she's able to find the Zeo Crystal that she's, that uh, she ends up finding in the that she ends up finding at a Krispy Kreme. <laughs> and uh, she decided because with the Zeo Crystal in this version of Power Rangers, it has the power to create and destroy worlds. Or the Zeo Crystal in, and of course, the mainline series of Power Rangers was the catalyst that would able to give the Rangers the Zeo powers. And it would destroy anyone that had the. It would destroy anyone that had any ounce of evil in them. And it would hence why Lord Zed looks the way he does. I wonder what the. I wonder what the take would have been on Lord Zed. There's so much fan art of, of, of like a really cool looking versions of like Lord Zed out there, and really cool versions of the rain or what Rita would look like or the Power Rangers themselves. Uh, yeah, and I honestly, that's what the uh, the suits reminded me of too. But that was the main major po uh, the major point of of Power Rangers to where Zordon was trying to and to basically use the team to kind of let get them to uh, access the Morphin Grid. That way he can get a body again because like Rita kills the whole team. <laughs> Rita does the killing this like she really does. It's insane. <laughs> yeah, they, they make like I said they make her like this intimidating version of Rita in this movie, but also make her the jokey kind of reader that you get on season 2 and season 3. Although, to be fair, throughout the series, she is quite jokey all the way up to, like, the end of it. Um, she's, like, she got a sense of humor and stuff like that. But, it's, like, the more hammy version. But, no, that, but to be fair, Elizabeth Banks does, I, this easy, she totally makes it, makes it a lot of fun, too. And, uh, it's just it's it's a wild it's a wild ride it really is but her main goal but her main goal to creating a monster is I'm going I, I need go I need go and she ends up like literally going to a jewelry store and eating the gold and she's going to end up she ends up creating Goldar which of course that's a big point of contention about this movie <laughs> that is a big point of contention because Goldar. He's like a giant hulking monster made of gold. The gold kind of looks like Velveeta cheese. Make my monster grow. <laughs> it's like he looked like Velveeta cheese. It's like it's the same way because I can remember it's. I can remember seeing it with the toys too. Like they were, I don't know. Which, by the way, I remember that the toys kind of gave the toys kind of gave spoilers away for the movie. But yes, there's like a mindless monster that was like, dude, the catchphrase like, "Make my monster grow." Also, it's the same with the Putty Patrollers. Uh, they were like, of course, like the putties were like made of like a special clay that also that Finster made on the moon on the moon base. Oh, oh again, this version of Power Rangers is an origin story. Totally plays into the ending of the Power Rangers and this movie. And totally uh I got a total Ellie syndrome going on. A big component uh, going back to Jason, a big component in Power Rangers was the fact the fact that it is uh that it was like filled to the brim with like martial arts stuff and they don't really get into it when they start until they start getting into Ranger training. But like throughout the thing, Jason's not doing any type of like martial art. He's like, uh, like so Billy, he's high functioning autistic, and needs him to get bullied by the kids. And he's, it's and so uh, and so Jason's sticking up for Billy, just smacks boys around. He ain't, he's not playing any games here. Normally, when it comes to Jason, he just <laughs> he outsmarts. He outsmarts like Bulk and Skull, and just has them do like something like the physical comedy, and make them do something that's goofy. But now this Jason, he's not playing around. It's like I got love for you. Wow. 
<laughs> it's nuts. And it's like, I mean, it caught, when I first saw it, it caught me off guard. I thought it was really cool. I thought, I thought it was interesting, an interesting twist with Jason. But then again, it goes back to the director said that raised real problems and these guys are troubled. Uh, yeah, they're troubled, they're flawed, you know. And although, to be fair, you want to stick up for your friends and get bullied by like, people who pick on other people. It's like, it's pretty jacked up. But at the same time, but it's, but it's interesting. And I haven't talked about Kimberly. It Chapter 1 came out the same year, so that version of Kimberly reminded me of Beverly from It Chapter 1, sort of, because like, she was also getting, because it was also like cyberpunk, except with that, that's a totally different thing, like, uh, that's, I don't know, I, I don't have the time to kind of get into that, <laughs> but it did, but I did watch the, uh, I did watch, uh, it, it the same year that Power Rangers, that 2017 Power Rangers came out, um, but it just, but it's like, I see a lot of parallels with the two, it's like, uh, and I thought it was really cool, I and mean, not cool, but like, you know, I thought it was interesting, uh, cause like, there was a lot of bullying with her, and a lot of bullying with uh, Kimberly, and it led Kimberly to start cutting her hair and just kind of have like this trouble. And like again, it go, again, the characters in this version of Power Rangers are all of them were troubled. Kimberly dealt with bullying. Jason dealt with like all these expectations on him. Billy had dealt with uh, people picking on him because of his autism. Uh, training was trouble because like she was a lot of. Uh, like of helicopter parents, overbearing parents, and then Zach keeping up appearances, trying to be, trying to be the cool guy when really he felt deeply troubled because like, uh, you know, because like there's a lot of scenes like, we're going to be famous, and he really just wanted to help his mom, you know, and <laughs> you know, it's crazy, uh, it's uh, stuff like that, and I was, and yeah, I see, so I totally see a lot of this, the, the trouble that goes into it, and it's just, I see a lot of the troubles that they face, and of course, the, yeah, it totally is relatable to a lot of people, and a lot of the, and it go back, going back to Zordon, he, uh, ends up being killed, he's trained the Rangers to become, he's trained the team to become Power Rangers, so that way they end up using access to the Morphin Grid in order to bring him back to life, that he could take over, but, uh, yeah, it's a, then it gets pretty, then it gets, starts to get a little darker, because then the Rangers try to take on Rita, uh, after Rita goes straight to Trini's, and it's like, uh, I'll show you yours, I'll show you mine, I'll, I'll show you mine, I'll show you yours, like, she starts getting pretty scared, like I said, she starts getting pretty scary, because again, this version of Rita is very intimidating, like, she's gonna, she's gonna, she kills people. <laughs> just like, uh, so <laughs> it's it's quite insane. Uh, so she ends up doing that, uh, and she ends up capturing the Rangers. She ends up like killing Billy. She ends up trying to kill him, but he has just the Morphin Grid, and uh, and they end up bringing him back. So that prompts them to want to morph again, they want to try to morph for real, and then eventually becoming pirates. Now, what I'm talking about might be all over the place, but I just thought it was really, I just thought it was really interesting. I thought it was really cool. Of course, the suits, uh, this of course the suits. Power Rangers, for my own Power Rangers, we all, as for the fans that, if you thought you do not know, okay, Power Rangers itself comes from the Japanese TV show called Super Sentai. Power, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers come from the 16th season of Power of uh, Super Sentai called Kyoto Sentai Zoo Ranger, which you can totally get, which you can totally watch on Shock Factory and get it on Shock Factory Factory's uh, website. Uh, is, uh, so, of course, they got the little diamond on the chest. They, it's like, it's like a it, going back to what I was talking about, like that really cool fit, like the really cool fan art of of. Uh, He's a really cool fan art of Power Rangers suits, and then I see some really cool ones. But I would imagine, like, I would imagine, like, uh, they had the, they had a lot. I guess they had a lot of looks they were going for. I guess they're going for like, because a lot of people would co uh, compare those suits to Iron Man's. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like Iron Man's costume with the unit with the uh, the arc reactor in his chest. But, uh, yeah, and, yeah, I, I, and I, 
agreed at the time, but those suits moved on me over time, and I was like, oh, I look low key, probably look look up one. <laughs> ultimately, they end up getting it. Ultimately, they have the putty fight, and like I said, this you don't get Ranger power to the third act of the movie. They end up getting Ranger power, and then go out to fight the putties, which they are like made of like the rocks and stuff, uh, and then, like uh, they end up fighting them. I. Hmm. I mean, it turned it though. It does go to the route that you would expect Power Rangers to take. They fight against the putties. Then they learn about the monster. They learn about the monster that's going because Rita's finished making Goldar, and they're headed to Krispy Kreme to, to find the location to get the location of the Zeo Crystal. And then eventually they start getting the they start getting to it. And then of course the Power Rangers have their Zords. I did not. I totally that was a video I also made. The Zords also have like an alien type deal. Um, and I can also remember the toys for the Megazord at the time, and they were just, they are just interesting designs. They have, like, they do remind me of, the, like, the, the Michael Bay Transformers, but they, you could kind of make out what they were a lot better. And, of course, they used the, the, the Megadeth version of the Power Rangers theme song. Go, go, Power Rangers. Do, 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 do. From the, the 1995 movie. And that was a, and when I heard that, I was just such a fun callback to that movie, and it's just, I would, like, and of course there's like a human version, cause like, what they're doing, and also they are doing like a nod to the, uh, the original Megazord, the, the transformation sequence where it's like the, the shot on the side, and all the, the Zords are flying on that side. That would have been, that was a really cool little Easter egg for the fans. And they're totally and they're quite and there are like Easter eggs for the fans of Power Rangers in this. And I totally dig it. Uh and, but yes, they end up going and fighting against Goldar. And, and it's like so Rita merged because Rita also merged with Goldar and able to control him. And then of course to get the full Megazord, which uh very interesting looking, very interesting looking Megazord, version of the Megazord, and again, although to be fair, on my end, I can remember, there was the, the giant Megazord toy, and the giant Voltron toy, and I totally missed out on those, as, at that time too, I really wish I could have, have had the opportunity to get one, but it's all good, that's not the point, but, I immediately reminded of those. Of really, immediately reminded of those because also at that time the twenty-seven, the, the reboot of uh, Voltron was out at the time. Uh, <laughs> but I totally did. Well, that was an interesting little sword, or a uh, little Zord fight against Goldar, because of course again on the first episode of Pirates, that's totally what happened, and the you know, defeating Goldar. And smacking Rita to the moon, which that's another Easter egg, because her 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 palace is on the moon, so that's really cool. Of course, the day is saved, and you get a cameo from Amy Jo Johnson and Jason David Frank. There's he totally did vlog about that on his YouTube channel, <laughs> and I wish there were actually more. I wish there was. Oh, that there's at least the two of them too. Ooh, and you don't see them, so yeah. And, yeah, or the deleted scenes. But at the same time, they end up saving the day, and we get a sequel hook with Tommy. Tommy Oliver. Tommy Oliver. A sequel hook about Tommy, which at the time I think there was a speculation that Tommy, that Tommy in the sequel to the 2017 Power Rangers was going to be a girl. So I thought, and there was a lot of debate and discussion about that on social media at the time and I thought huh that would have been that would be interesting because then it goes back to what I was talking about with the deleted scene with Jason and Kimberly kissing and it was like they end up being a couple the Tommy the, the Tommy comes in they start to get together the, that Kimberly and Tommy start to get together it probably would have been Tommy would probably would have been just a nickname they would have been just something completely different uh something like that I would, cause I could totally see that happening from something like the 2017 Power Rangers that being sort of a subplot. Cause they totally did intend on uh, more sequels to the Power Rangers. Cause I remember them saying they were going to do at least five movies. And I remember, and of course, at that time, uh, I was wondering if they were ever going to do 
lead up to like something about Lord Zed or Lord Zed having something with Terra or something like that. Uh, I would have loved to have seen that. Or of course, obviously doing the most famous story now with Power Rangers Lord, the Green Evil. So uh, a, the, a different take on the Green Evil saga. And then of course maybe the White Ranger, maybe the Stone King and Trio, the sky's the limit when it comes to Power Rangers and even the Ninjetti. Even something with the Ninjetti. Something really interesting like that. Uh, a little bit like this scene. But of course it's been confirmed that that for the 2023 and the uh, the Power Rangers sequel for the Power Rangers this, the next trial on a reboot is going to be a time travel back to the 90s uh, it made me think of like Captain Marvel was that set in the 90s I was on a very famous TV show <laughs> but uh I would say that they're going to do a time travel back to the 90s which makes me think of something like Power Rangers Hyperforce uh I can see that happening, which is also with that Hyperforce set in the same vein as Power Rangers Time Force in uh, the year 3000. So that would be interesting to see what happens. Of course, there's been more information revealed, and I will totally get to that in time. I'll also be getting to the stuff about Power Rangers Comic Fury in the time. That's those are things that come, and it was which Power Rangers Comic Fury is already starting to film. It's only going to be 10 episodes, and but that will be for another video. Ah, uh, this took forever to finish, and I am glad I finished with this video. It, it's a lot I have to say, and it's been this has been a video that's been a long time coming for me and this channel, and I am glad, and, and I apologize for taking so long. I've been trying to be, I'm able to post on my, my community tabs, I'm a very good friend with you guys, but for the most part, I really did, I really did enjoy making this video, but uh, on that note, that's gonna be it for this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn your post notifications on for no proper posts on the video. We can continue the fun on my Twitch channel, Twitch.tv slash RedDragonMA. And I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Ugus Google Peace.